Okay, well, let's get started. So we're going to do prosperity because two of us here need this right now. And it shall be done, and it's in motion, and so be it in the name of Jesus. Okay, so we're going to do prosperity. We, we talked about this back in April. We're going to do it again today and probably next time. And the summary of the whole teaching is God will supply all of our needs through Jesus. I mean, that's the bottom line. That's what the great and precious promises in the Bible tell us. Amen? And it's true. So what we'll do is we're going to talk about prosperity from five different angles. You know, so that I like to try and come up with as many ways as possible to believe for a subject. And then it increases the likelihood that you can believe in at least one or more of the aspects. So what we see when we study the Bible, we can see that there's at least five angles on prosperity. I'm sure there's more than this, but these are five that I captured. One of them is that prosperity is part of our salvation. So when we look at the salvation words, you know, and there's at least three of them, there's probably more salvation words than that, but there's Yeshua in the Old Testament. There's Soteria in the New Testament. There's Sozo also in the New Testament. And I'm sure there's other words, but those are three very common salvation words that we find in the Bible. And you can look in any one of those and you'll find something that pertains to prosperity. So prosperity is part of our salvation. Okay, we can also, we have very specific statements from the Holy Spirit that my God shall supply all of your need through his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. And so it is God's goodwill that all of our needs always be fulfilled. And so we can believe from that perspective, believing in scriptures like that one, and our needs shall be fulfilled. Amen. Then we can also look and see, especially like, well, I guess in the Old Testament and maybe a couple of examples from Paul, you can see that it is God's will for us to have work. He wants us to have work. He gives us the power to get wealth. Um, he says, you know, it's it's ungodly. Anybody that does not provide for his own household is worse than an unbeliever you know, in the New Testament. And so you get the idea that God's will is he wants us to have work. He wants to bless the work of our hands. And so our hands have to be doing something in order to receive that blessing. So his desire is that we have work. So if we're out of a job and we need one, then he shall supply one. Okay, then we also have the law of sowing and reaping. And if there's something that you need in life, then we you sow the same thing that you need and you shall receive it. And, you know, an, an interesting example of that, you know, when you look at doctors, you don't see very many sick doctors, even though they may not be Christian or, or believe in the stripes of Jesus or anything like that. Well, why is that? You know, if they're like touching sick, sick people all day long, how come they don't how come they don't get sick? Well, because they are sowing health. You know, maybe not the same way we would sow it, like we would sow health by prayer, but they're sowing health by the means that they know. They sow health and they receive health. Amen? You know, you sow money, you receive money. You sow love and care to people, you receive love and care. So whatever seeds you're planting with your sowing, you're going to re reap the same thing in return because every seed produces the same kind. And so if somebody needs, you know, financial blessing or prosperity, then we should live generous lives uh, even if we have just a little, we can be generous with the little that we have and we will reap a reward. Amen. And then we can also look and see, uh, especially in Isaiah chapter 58, um, if I remember correctly, Isaiah 58, it talks about the true fast of God. And the true fast of God is that, you know, basically we walk in love. And whenever you walk in love, there's a whole like list of automatic blessings that will come you know, protection, prosperity, health, healing, and things like that. And so I'm sure there's more ways you can believe in prosperity, but these are five ways that we're going to talk about in this teaching. All right, so let's go ahead here. Prosperity as part of salvation. Prosperity is included in the full salvation that Jesus has provided to us. Everything that Jesus did, he did for all people. Every aspect of salvation comes about in the same way. First, we must know what Jesus has provided to us and believe it in our hearts. Secondly, we must confess it with our mouths, which will bring it to pass. Okay, so one of the things, I, one of the most important practices that we should have is scripture confession. You know, so this morning I, I spent a, an extra amount of time doing scripture confession it's a great way to speak faith. It's a great way to make the promises of God come true in your life. It's a great way to grow in your understanding of scriptures because you're 
you're focusing in on just a couple of scriptures at a time rather than you know reading through pages and pages and pages of the Bible and just glossing over what you read. When you're engaged in scripture confession, you're having to really digest that great and precious promise that you're about to confess. And so that's a really good technique. Okay, well, the mechanism for salvation is what we find in Romans 10, verse 9 to 10. This is also called the law of faith. This is how faith works. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Okay, so this is how salvation works. Whether it's salvation for like forgiveness of sins to receive eternal life, whether it's salvation, like any of the aspects of salvation, you know, deliverance, healing, you know, prosperity or anything like that. Uh, every aspect of salvation works the same way because this is how faith works. We need to believe something in our heart. Okay, so we need to, we're going to look at the definitions of these salvation words. and We need to believe in our heart the prosperity aspects of those words, right? And then we want to believe in our heart, you know, Jesus, he became poor so that I am made rich. You know, Jesus wants me to be rich. Jesus wants me to be provided for. I believe in my heart. So let me confess with my mouth so that I can receive that financial blessing, the job that I need, or, or whatever, right? That's how it works. And, and in this passage here, there are actually two salvation words. So this first word is the word sozo. And we'll look at that in a minute with John 3.17. And the second word, salvation, is the word soteria. Um, so the words are used interchangeably. But the key principle here is the law of faith is believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. And then when you do that, salvation will come. Salvation will come or healing or preservation or whatever aspect of salvation you need. You confess that specific thing. Amen. Okay, so Jesus, um, Jesus paid, <laughs> let me start over. The way salvation works for any aspect is the same. Like every aspect of salvation, Jesus suffered something and everything he suffered has a corresponding benefit. And so like if we think about, well, what did he suffer for sins, right? Well, for sins, he was, um, he was, first of all, he was, he was crucified, he was beaten, he was mocked. He was put to shame. Ultimately, he died. He was separated from Father God. He went to Hades. You know, so those are the things that Jesus suffered to give us forgiveness of sins and eternal life. Amen? I mean, so Jesus, he experienced some horrible, horrible things beyond our imagination. And everything that Jesus ever suffered has a benefit for us attached to it. Okay? So that's what he did for eternal life. Well, what did he do for healing? For healing... He bore our sicknesses. He carried our pain. So in the case of healing, you know, our sickness, it literally went into Jesus. You know, all of your sicknesses, it literally went into Jesus. All of our pains of body and soul, they literally went into Jesus. Literally. Like he was it wasn't just some spiritual thing and that he didn't suffer. No, he literally physically suffered to the extent that it says in Isaiah 52, 14, that his um, form did not resemble a human being. He did not. He was so contorted from all the torture that they did to him, from all the sickness and disease and and curse that went into him. He did not look like a human being. So that was an extreme payment that Jesus made for us to be healed. Amen. Okay. Well, what did he do? Um, you know, part of our salvation is redemption from law and curse. So Jesus fulfilled the law perfectly, and then he bore all the curse for us. That bearing of curse entitles us to be redeemed from curse by way of faith in him. And every sickness, every disease, all forms of captivity and oppressions of the devil, and there's like a huge, huge list of all the curses. And, and Jesus was cursed. You know, whoever's hanged on a tree, they are cursed. He bore the curse for us. So we are freed from curse. And so freedom from curse is part of our salvation. Well, in the same way, when it comes to um, finances and provision, you know, we see what Jesus did in 2 Corinthians 8, 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty 
might become rich. Okay, so here we see that same mechanism of salvation. Jesus suffered something. So for our sakes, for our sakes, he became poor. All right, so that's what he suffered. He was rich. He gave that up. He became poor. And then through faith in him, through his poverty, then we have the right to be rich. And that doesn't mean like greedy, selfish, self-centered rich, but a rich person a rich person is someone who never lacks anything that they need. They always have everything that they need, and they have extra left over for good works. That is a Bible definition of rich. Now, some people may have a much more profound financial blessing from God, and you'll oftentimes see them use that profound blessing for ministry work, right? So there's good purpose in that. But at a minimum, this word rich means all of your needs always fulfilled with an abundance left over for every good work. That's what it means at the minimum. Amen. And that means you would live a comfortable and good life, perfectly provided for, always, never lacking anything. That's a good condition to be in. And that's just the minimum. Amen. So, so if we want this to come true in our lives, then how does it work? Believe in our heart what Jesus has done. He became poor for us to become rich and then confess with our mouth. And when we do that, we will receive that financial or prosperity provisional aspect of salvation. Amen. All right, so then let's look at the salvation words, and we'll see, we'll see that the that prosperity is in those words. In Psalm ninety-one sixteen, with long life I will satisfy him, and show him my salvation. Okay, so this is the word Yeshua, and if you knock the H off the end of this, then you have Yeshua, a variation of the same name, which is Jesus's name. Which, which means Savior, okay? And this word, Yeshua, this version of the word, it means something saved, like us. We are, we are saved ones. Um, it means deliverance. And so deliverance from danger, deliverance from a demon, deliverance from addiction, deliverance from any kind of captivity or whatever. Um, aid, you know, so our salvation includes the aid, the assistance of God in everyday life. Our salvation includes victory, Though we have a trial at hand, we shall have victory over it and shall prevail and shall come out better than we were before. Amen. Prosperity is part of salvation. So if we believe in our heart in this prosperity aspect of salvation and confess with our mouth, we will receive that prosperity aspect of salvation. Okay. Um, health, healing, having God's help, um, and so forth. All these things are part of our Yeshua salvation. And then importantly, this word welfare. And so we'll look at that in a second. But prosperity, you know, if we look at the word prosperity, which, which is in our salvation, it means a successful, flourishing, thriving condition, especially in financial respects. Okay, that's the definition of prosperity. And so that, that's very specific, right? And so it's good because that's exactly what we need and what we want is we want to be successful in everything that we're doing in life, successful in our ministry, successful in our jobs, successful in our school, whatever we're doing shall be successful. That is being prosperous. Flourishing is the same thing, right? Thriving is the same thing. But then specifically, additionally, in financial regards. Amen? Okay. And then worldly people might refer, might refer to a person who's abiding in this aspect of salvation, they might say, well, you have good fortune or you have good luck. That would be like a worldly way of saying it, but really it's being blessed by God. Okay, then this is one of my favorite words ever since I looked up the definition, welfare. Our Yeshua salvation includes welfare, which is exemption from misfortune, exemption from sickness, exemption from calamity, exemption from evil the enjoyment of health, and the common blessings of life, such as prosperity and happiness. Amen? So there it is again. Prosperity is in our salvation. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, then we'll look at the word sozo from John three seventeen. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Jesus might be saved, might be sozo saved. Sozo is the Greek word. It means to save. And that can mean for eternity, through the forgiveness of sins. It can mean to save from, you know, an accident, a tragedy, a calamity, something evil. 
um, to deliver, deliver from a demon, deliver from addiction, deliver from sickness, deliver from you know any bad situation, protection, healing, preservation, and to do well in life. To do well in life means to prosper. And so the will of God is that we prosper in life. I mean, we're his children. Like, does anybody among us have children and you want them to be poor and struggling to eat and have no job? I mean, nobody would want that for their kid, right? Well, neither does our Father want us to struggle and not have our needs fulfilled. That's why our salvation includes to do well in life. In other words, to prosper in life. And that includes having uh, income, wealth, and all of your needs fulfilled. Amen? So that is the will of God. It is in our salvation. Let us believe that in our heart. Let us confess that with our mouths. And let us receive that and walk in this prosperity blessing. Amen? Okay, let's look at our second angle, which is God's will is to supply all of our needs through Jesus. That is the good will of God. And it's important that we know God's good will. You know, it's important to know his good will, to know the great and precious promises. It's important to know all the things that are included in the full salvation of Jesus Christ. We want to know these things. We want to believe these things. And we have a commitment from God that when we pray for his will to be done, the answer is yes. So our responsibility is, first of all, to know his will, second of all, to believe his will, and third of all, to pray for it. And when we do those things, or confess it, and when we do those things, then we shall receive it. And so we have scriptures like 1 John 5, 14 to 15 to lean upon. Now, this is the confidence that we have in him, in Father God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. Okay, so he says very specifically, we should be confident when we pray. Why is that? Because if we pray for his will to be done, you know, if we pray for his heart desires, that's what that word will means. If we're praying for God's very own heart desires, then he's going to hear us. Like, if you ask me to do something that I love to do, I'm listening. I'm listening very closely because you're asking me about something I love to do, right? If we if we pray to our Father about something that's special to His heart, that's according to His will, then His ears perk up, right? So God, He's listening. He's like, okay, I like what you're saying here. And then whatever we ask, you know, when we pray for God's own desires to be done, whatever we ask, we know that we shall have the petitions that we have asked of him. It doesn't say maybe, it says we know that we shall receive. So, so our part is to just find these great and precious promises like the ones we're about to talk about, to believe them and confess them and pray for them. And when we pray for God's will to be done, then we know, that's a promise, then we know it shall be done. We shall have what we have asked of him. Amen? So God is not wishy-washy. You know, his will is rock solid. You know, he has a common goodwill for all people. And then he may have more specific things for specific individuals, right? So his goodwill is that all of my needs be fulfilled, but he might want me to have a particular job at a particular place and somebody else a different job at a different place. And so there's a general goodwill, which applies to all. And then there's a specific goodwill, which would be individually um, relevant to particular individuals, Okay. Okay, so 3 John 1, 2 is one of these great and precious promises. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Okay, so this is a nice summary of God's goodwill in total at a high level. You know, so the will of God is that we prosper in all things. Okay, well, uh, in order for me to prosper in all things, one of the things that I need is I need a job, I need an income, I need provision, I need food, I need shelter. You know, so those are things that I need to prosper in, right? Am among many other things. But his goodwill is that we prosper in all things. So that includes having employment. That includes finances. That includes having provision. It includes anything that you can think of. He wants you to prosper in everything. You know, we are his beloved children. Beloved. Beloved. We are beloved by God. We are so beloved by God that Jesus suffered all those extraordinary things to give us these extraordinary benefits. And the result of that is that 
if we can believe in his good will for us to prosper in all things, and if we can make this more specific than all things and apply it to our current situation and pray for those things, then it shall be done. Because we know that we shall receive whatever we ask of him when we pray according to his will. Amen? So what I, what I like to do is if I have a specific thing that I need, then I'm going to make a confession by putting the specific thing in there. And even if I don't have something I need at a point in time, I'm still going to take this scripture and I'm going to confess it in a, with, I'm going to confess it multiple times, putting many different unique things in there that I'm interested in. Right. Okay. So I'll come back to that in, in a second, but then, you know, he also says that he wants us to prosper in health. He wants us to prosper in our soul. So those are, you know, those are other things that we need, body, soul, and spirit, right, and life. Okay, so what I would do with a scripture like this, you know, first I, I would read it out loud, and then I want to confess it. I am a beloved son of God. I am a beloved God, a child of the Most High, according to the scripture. I am the beloved brother of Jesus. I am the beloved temple of God. I am the beloved dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. I am loved by God, and I love you, God. I declare in the name of Jesus, I prosper in all things. I declare in the name of Jesus that I prosper in preaching and teaching. I prosper in all things, therefore I prosper in healing the sick. I declare in the name of Jesus, I prosper in all things, therefore I have a wonderful job with abundant pay, with wonderful, good, and godly people to share my life with, for it is written that I prosper in all things. You know, so I'm going to confess this scripture and I'm going to put all kinds of things in there and confess all those things. So for me personally, I'm always confessing that, you know, I want to prosper in ministry and preaching and teaching and healing the sick. I prosper in finances. I prosper. You know, I just make a long list and I specifically confess those things. And so you have to make the scripture a bit more specific in order to get a maximum benefit out of it. Right. And so when you put things in there that you're desiring or that you need and confess them, they're going to start coming true. Amen? All right. So his goodwill is prosperity from 3 John 1, 2. And we come to Philippians 4, 19. And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Okay, so this is very straightforward. It's very direct. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Okay, if somebody needs a job, it's included. If somebody needs financial blessing, it's included. If somebody needs some other aspect of provision, it's included. We've even used this scripture to pray for people that there was some unknown prayer request for them, and we just prayed according to the scripture, let all of their needs be fulfilled through Jesus. And somebody's mother was healed from a stroke because we didn't know what needed to be prayed for. We just prayed for all need to be fulfilled according to the scripture and God fulfilled it, even healing. Amen. So I, I use this most, most directly. I use it for any kind of financial needs or job needs or provisional needs, things like that. But it even will extend beyond that if you, if you will believe in your heart. Amen. Okay. And then one more. In Psalm 34, 8 to 10, O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. O fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear, those who fear him, reverence him, those who reverence him have no lack. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Okay, so if we... Our, well, we're born again, right? So we're in a, a very special place. This was Old Testament. So we are connected with God. We are one with God. We are joined together with God. We are the body of Christ. The spirit of our Father is within us. We are in Christ. Christ is in us. So we are just completely united and made one with God. Amen. And we reverence our Father. We love him and we respect him and we honor him and we exalt him. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, all all of the Godhead, we reverence them. We don't fear, like as in, I'm afraid of God. We don't fear him because He's. we have no need to be afraid of him because he loves us and he blesses us, but we reverence him. Amen. And those who reverence him, those who know him and love him, which is us, anyone who's a believer, then we shall have no lack. Amen. Well, it, 
And, and, and he goes on to say, and those who seek the Lord shall lack no good thing. Okay, so this is even bigger than having your needs fulfilled. This is bigger than that. So first of all, you shall have no lack. If you do have lack, that means you have unfulfilled needs. Okay, so first of all, we shall not have lack. Second of all, he says we shall lack no good thing. Well, there's plenty of good things that we may desire beyond our need. You know, so not only will we not have unfulfilled needs, but we will even have additional on, you know, good things on top of that. Let's just say our need is to here, and then there's some good things that we want up to here. So he'll fulfill the needs for sure because it says um, we will not have lack because it says all of our needs shall be fulfilled because it says we shall prosper in all things. So we're certainly not going to be lacking any of our needs, but maybe there's some good things on top of that that are healthy desires, then we'll even have that as well. Amen. So God's goodwill is that he wants to supply all of our needs. And there's many other scriptures I could put on this page, but there's, you know, here's three of them. Amen. And, you know, again, believing in any of these three or any of the other provision or prosperity scriptures, believe in your heart and pray according to God's will. The answer is yes. And I like that. Okay, um, the next section, so the third aspect for this provision teaching is that we can believe that God's will is that he wants us to have work. Okay, so if we go back to the Old Testament, we come to Deuteronomy 28, 12, and it says, The Lord will open to you his good treasure, the heavens, to give the rain to your land in its season, and to bless all the work of your hand. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. Okay, so first of all, you know, this is part of the law. Okay, well, we're not we're not in the law. We are redeemed. We are ransomed out from the law. You know, Jesus rescued us from the law. The law was unattainable. Jesus fulfilled the law for us. And so how did he do that? Jesus walked perfectly in the law. He fulfilled all the requirements of the law. And then he bore the punishment of the law, which was curse. And by Jesus doing those things, now by faith in him, we are redeemed from the law. We're not under law. We're under grace. Okay, so, well, how do you receive this law blessing if you're not under the law? Well, just like by way of Jesus bearing the curse, by faith in him, we are redeemed from curse, right? So we don't have to bear curse because Jesus bore curse, okay? And so by believing that Jesus redeemed us from curse— then we can receive the benefit of being free from curse. Okay, In the exact same way, by way of Jesus perfectly fulfilling the law, by faith in him, we are entitled to all the blessings of the law. So we're entitled to all the blessings of the law, and we're also entitled to, to freedom from all the curses of the law. So it's like perfect for us. All we need to do is just believe in Jesus. Amen? And we do. Okay, so when we look at this, First of all, it says, you know, God will open his good treasure for us, you know, the heavens, to give the rain to your land in its season. Okay, so if you're a farmer, then the most important thing you need is you need rain in order for your prosperity to come, for your crops to flourish, right? And so the, it doesn't have to be specifically rain, but God will, he will water, he will fertilize, he will bless, he will cause to flourish whatever it is that you're doing in life. Amen. So if we're not farmers, then so what? We, the blessing still belongs to us. It doesn't have to be physical, literal rain. It can. It's just blessing. He will bless all the work of our hands. It says all the work of our hands. And, and so importantly, you know, if we want to be blessed by God, if we want to receive this blessing here. There's also a condition there. He will bless all the work of our hands. So are our hands working? You know, because there's a lot of people that maybe they're on government programs. And I'm not talking about people that have an inability or a disability, you know, that they can't work or do anything. I'm not talking about them. But there are some people that just take advantage of government programs and money handouts and things like that. And, you know, God, there's no blessing upon that because there's no work of the hands. So God's will is that he wants us to be working on something. And it doesn't have to be working a job, but he wants to bless the work of our hands. We could be working in the garden, in the farm. We could be working with other people. We, whatever we're doing, 
you know, whatever we're doing with our hands, whatever we're applying ourselves to, God will bring a blessing upon it. Amen. And we are entitled to that blessing because Jesus fulfilled the law for us. So all the blessings of the law belong to us. It is God's goodwill to bless us. And so we need our hands to be doing something. And then he says, you know, your financial blessing, it shall be so strong that you will not have need to borrow. You shall not borrow. You sh on the contrary, we shall be lenders. We shall lend to many nations. We shall lend to other people. We shall be givers. We don't even necessarily have to lend, but we can just give. Amen. So we shall be so financially blessed according to this blessing of the law by way of believing in Jesus and confessing this thing or praying for it that we will be lenders, givers, and have no need to borrow. And that's a good place to be in. Amen? All right. And then specifically in Deuteronomy 8.18, he says, And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. Okay, so God has given us various means to get wealth. He has given us various powers, talents, skills, you know, things like that from which we can get wealth. Amen? So he gives me a certain set of knowledge. Maybe he gives others of you, you know, some different kind of knowledge. And so we, we have all these, these blessings from God. We have these gifts from God that entitle each of us to uniquely uh, gain wealth in different kinds of ways. Amen. So there's certain things he's gifted me with that I like to do. And, you know, my next job shall be aligned with those things that I like to do. He's given me those powers to get wealth. Um, if somebody's, you know, a farmer or a rancher, help, you know, that's one way. Somebody could work a job. That's another way. Somebody could be an investor would be another way. So there's all these different kinds of ways in which God gives us power to get wealth. And so if you don't know what that is, then you just pray and ask him and say, God, you know, you said, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask and you will give it freely. And so say, Father, I don't, I just, I'm at a loss. I don't know what direction to go for, to get wealth. I need wealth in my life. I need prosperity. I need provision. I don't know what direction to go. So I'm asking you for wisdom. And then he will, he will tell you, he will enlighten you, and he will give you direction so that you can find that thing that you need to enter into. Okay, but specifically, he wants us to be doing something, and he's going to bless it, right? So he gives us power to get wealth. We're not to just sit on the couch and get wealth, but he gives us power to get wealth. So we have to do something, and he'll bless the work of our hands. All right? And so his goodwill, what we see from these passages you know, if the example is that somebody needs a job, then you can see that definitely we could pray for somebody to get a job and we would expect God to bring it forth because, you know, it's it applies, you know, having a job applies to these scriptures. It's related to these scriptures. It's it's in agreement with these scriptures. Amen. All right. Then if we come to the New Testament, the the kind of the same principles are stated, except in a negative way. So Paul was dealing with some, I guess there were some lazy people that he was around that didn't want to work and didn't want to contribute. And so he was dealing with that. And so we get a little bit of a negative, a negative kind of counter perspective on this. So in 2 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians 3.10, it says, For even when we were with you, we commanded you this, If anyone will not work, neither shall he eat. Okay, so you could say this in a positive light also. You could say, the will of God is that everyone work, and the will of God is that everyone eat. Okay, so he was dealing with some troublesome people, and this was a problem. So he stated it in a negative way. But the same thing is true when you state it in a positive way. The will of God is that we do have work, and the will of God is that we shall always eat. That is the positive version of this scripture, right? And so, therefore, we can believe in this scripture. We can believe that God does want us to work. And then we can pray for someone to receive a job, and they shall receive a job. Amen? And similarly, in 1 Timothy 5, 8, it says, But if anyone does not provide for his own, and especially for those of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Okay, so again, this is, 
you know, it's stated in a negative direction, but we can flip it around and say it in a positive direction. The will of God is that everyone does provide for his own family. And the will of God is that we do not deny the faith. The will of God is that we take care of our household. And so in looking at this from a positive perspective, then that means that we can pray for the ability to provide for our own household, such as by way of having a job or some other form of income or work to do, and God will deliver. Amen? So in summary, God's will is that we do work of some kind and he will bless it. Remember that we can pray for anything according to his will and he will do it. That's 1 John 5, 14 and 15. Therefore, we can be confident praying for someone to get a job because his will for us is for us to have work and to contribute to our families and contribute into the lives of others. That is his good will. Amen. All right, so we're going to wrap there for today, but let me show you what we'll finish up on. We'll talk about the law of sowing and reaping next time. We will talk about walking in love. Walking in love for God and love for man results in Old Testament blessings. We'll look at uh, we'll look at that from another angle. There's something called the true fast, and w- which really, when you break it down, it's love with action. These are he's telling us in in Isaiah 58. There's things he doesn't want us to do, and there's things he does want us to do. And when we don't do the don'ts, and when we do the do do the do's, then basically. It summarizes to we're walking in love. And then he has some very specific blessings that come about as a result of doing those things. And and then we'll talk about how to pray for these things. All right, so I know this is a replay session that we did just recently back in April, but some of us need this right now, so I'm hoping that that will encourage us. So any comments or questions?